If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. I have spoken with Dave Roussan, asked him if it would be okay for me to pursue making that guitar, and he said that I have his blessing. I want to just go ahead and trudge forward and build custom guitars and give some of these guitars away to people who would really appreciate it. So the threads of those bolts are going to take right in there. So Hopefully I don't destroy this whole thing in the process. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and intonate my guitar. Now, what I have found is that right now, the entire guitar is flat, which what, what, and what that means is when I play my low E, it is showing that it is, that my tuner shows that it is tuned perfectly to a low E. And then, if I hit it at the 12th fret, now I'm flat. I'm one octave up, but I'm a flat octave. So all of my strings do the same thing. So that means this whole bridge needs to get moved this way, going that direction. The thing I like about this bridge is I can adjust a couple different ways. One, I can adjust the entire bridge with these two screws here, which change it on the posts. And then I can adjust each and every individual string by adjusting these screws that are in the front of this here. Just think, if you're flat, you need to go this direction. If you're sharp, you need to go that direction to intonate. Okay, I have moved the saddles up, and now I am uh, I'm in intonated. E chord. E chord, and we're... We're intonated. If you're trying to intonate and you find like you're having a problem with it being sharp all the time, uh, something that you got to think about is how close are your strings to your frets. If your strings are too far away from your frets, well, essentially it's the same as if you're bending your string. Because if you're pushing down a certain amount of distance, you're bending the string, so you're doing a, a bend. So instead of E, you're doing E sharp, you know, or because you're bending it so far. So if your strings are too far out, if your neck is 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 bowed, and your strings are too far away from the neck, then you can get that problem of them being sharp as you keep going. So something to be aware of. I got I keep my strings pretty close, so if you can see there where they are in relation to the frets. So. Uh, Pretty close. And I still have to see about whether or not I need to adjust the truss rod at all yet or not. If I do adjust the truss rod, then I need to intonate again slightly. So, and I still need to finish doing the nut. Um, it looks pretty good right now. I'm halfway tempted to just leave it, but I want to polish it up and make it look really good. <coughs> As you can see, this nut's not finished. It's shiny, but you can see that it's rough edges here yet. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to I'm going to round this off, and then I'm going to just use sandpaper and I will sand it so that it's nice and smooth. I'm just going to move that out of the way a little bit. So first thing is going to be a little more hardcore. We're going to go down to the garage and I'm going to go to my belt sander and I'm going to shape that a little better. And I'm going to start off with 320 paper, and I do, I still wet it, and I'm just going to come around. Now this is 320. 320 is pretty abrasive yet when you're doing stuff like this. But I've got a 
little hunk there that needs to get sanded out smooth. So obviously I do one side and then I do the other side and then as I continue to work it down then I'll I won't use a clamp anymore because even the clamps can leave marks on them. We have it. This is after 600 grit. It's, it's still filming. You can still see little scratches on it and all, of course. So, All right. Now this is after 1,000 and then 1,500 grit. So this is after 2,500 grit, 2,000 grit, and then 2,500 grit. Now I'm going to use 3,000 grit, which is just this. It's this red spongy stuff but uh, it's got a rougher edge so that's going to be next after after 3000 grit but let's not quit there it's looking pretty shiny it's shaped the way I want it to be shaped but now what we want to do is we want to make this look like it's something off the jewelry line at Macy's so. okay so what we're going to do is apply a little of this wizard's turbo cut I'm just going to put some on my hand and I'm going to just rub it in. Just polish this up. So I'm just going to go like so. Yeah, that's going to look good. It might seem like that was. A lot of work it took me maybe 45 minutes to shape it and to polish it with all the different various sandpapers don't let it intimidate you just have at it work at it and it'll, it'll come along so In my last video, I just did this mock-up very quickly of what it is that I'm going to route out. Now what I want to do is actually make a template, and I'm going to use the dimensions from this guitar. And this, although it's a very beautiful piece of wood, two things happened when I was routing it out. I was going to use this as one of my body pieces. This last time when I did the routing, I routed out five body pieces and I was going to use this one for another one. Two things happened. One is my router took a jump and I took a nick out of this side. I also took a nick out of that same spot on my template and I had to fix that. So I did show myself fixing that. The other thing is I thought well I could probably fix that but then as I came around here and came up to this little horn here which is right here uh, as you can see it took a piece out. So unfortunately, that renders this body blank as useless as a body blank. However, what it will make for is a really nice template for me to cut out my area in here to use. So if I cut that out with these areas here and cut those out there, then I'll be able to use this as a template. So now what I need to do is go ahead and get my measurements and actually make this template. So 
So I'm going to want to not only have a place for the anchor points of my bridge, which are going to be in here and here, but I also want to make sure that I've got enough solidity in this and go deeper. So this will have to be a thicker piece of wood in this area uh, so that I don't get too thin around that. So I just need to kind of check on where that's at. And really, if I come across with that line, just keep that whole area a little bit more solid. That's going to help a lot. Well, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this countersinking bit to drill a hole on both sides of this template because I will be able to just screw this into the half of the body that I'm going to be routing and I don't have to worry about any screws making a mark where they shouldn't. So this is approximately going to be where the pickup, the SA pickup and the 85X pickup will go. Um, so I'm just going to make these things. I countersink them so the head of my screw will go in and not hinder the router. Okay, so now I've got that bored out with that Forstner bit, and now I'm going to use my router with a bit with the uh, bearing at the shaft. The uh, depth, I'm going to just take little swaths again, so I'm not even going down as far as what I've used the Forstner bit at this point, and I will make a nice uh, path around there so that I can basically just take this template off and then use what I've routed as the template. Okay, while it's tempting to just go ahead and slap these together and, and glue them together and start clamping, there's a few things that I want to do before. One of those is I am going to paint the inside of these with this conductive shielding paint from Stumac. I really don't need this for the EMGs, but I'm going to use it for two reasons. One is if, say, there's a time where I want to swap out an EMG for something else. I can't imagine why I would want to, but if I did, then it's already shielded inside here. The other thing is, is that I want... One of the other things we're going to do is we're going to cut the sound hole out. And when it's on here, what I want is I want this to be nice and dark back in here so that it that sound hole comes off as being just really nice and dark. Those are my two reasons for for doing this. The stuff is uh, kind of potent. You want a fairly uh, airy space. You don't want to be in a cramped space using this stuff because it really does have a, a strong, strong fumes to it. Last night I had a good conversation with a guy on Messenger from Scotland and he is building uh, a guitar for himself and one of his students is building a guitar for himself 
and he was asking me a few questions about how do I get these swirls in there uh, what's the process for doing that and I'm gonna walk you through this one today on how I do that one these are a little bit more complicated we'll get to them eventually I will say that I've got a unique way of getting the swirl uh, put on so that I got it traced out and then these two here are actually freehand I, I cut those and uh, carve those freehand. This one, however, I do use a router, so I'm gonna show you how I do that. Um, he told me that he had purchased some templates off the internet, so I sent him pictures. I said, like these, and he sent me pictures. Yeah, same thing. A few years back when I started this whole project, like most guitar guys that are gonna build a guitar, uh, go to the internet, find out are there any templates out there and these templates are out there. There's some really great things about these templates and I want to give you some warnings about them. Uh, the first thing is <clears throat> this is what I used when I first cut out my very first guitars and the other thing that I did right away is I used this to cut out other templates immediately. Thicker ones, beefier ones and uh, it's a good thing too because like right here I've got a nick in there because after a while uh, eventually you just you gouge it something happens with your router and so I always make backups right away well when I took my guitars up to Dave Roussand, uh up in Bloomington area of Minnesota and my guitar next to his guitar body that he was working on mine was further along at the time but you could put mine over top of his and it was it was right on however couple things I was glad that I caught this because I measure everything multiple times um, had I used these holes for the bridge posts had I used those holes off of this template right where they were when I first put this together um, they would have been off once I got my neck put in where my neck needed to be and had it all straightened out um, in measuring I had to come down three-eighths of an inch because I am using, and I don't know if this is set up for a 25 and a half inch scale neck or what, but the original neck was a 24 and 3 quarter inch neck with a straight 12 inch radius on it. So that's what I do. I had to move this down 3 eighths of an, eight, three -eighths of an inch to get it where it needed to be so those saddles were in the halfway point of that. The other thing is, is that if you look at it real close, you can see from the, from the line in the center that these are skewed they are not quite in the right place. The other thing however this this is this is good that curl is really good. Problem with this is you really can't use this template to make that swirl on the guitar because the the, the groove is just way too small to get a router bit in there and uh, I don't even know that you can get a Dremel with well even a Dremel I think would be too big but anyway so what I did was trying to figure out how do I do that. Now this is going to look really ugly, which it is. However, it worked and it was great. All I need to do when I route is hold my bearing against one side here. And so this part needed to be dead on. doesn't matter what this does as long as this side is what, what it needed to be. So what I did was I traced my line on there. Then I cut it out with a uh, bandsaw and then I sanded. Make sure that this is nice and smooth. So I got this real good. This is kind of ugly. But by doing that, and you'll notice what I did was I've got this part up to this part in the shape of the guitar. So I can take my guitar body and I can just line this up so that it's where it needs to be there take my router and I can route right around there just making sure all the time pulling putting a little pressure against this edge because you don't want to go out and don't try and necessarily do it all at once even though it's a very shallow cut the other thing was is that my original guitars that I did I was getting too deep with that groove um, I was going too far down I was going man I 
I must have been at least three eighths of an inch deep. And at three eighths, maybe even more. No, well, no, because I wasn't half an inch. So I would say probably three eighths, maybe three and a half eighths. I don't know. Anyway, problem is get this too deep and then your um, cavity on the back where your electronics are going to go. If you get that too close, you can end up with a very thin line or you'll actually break through, which I did on one body and threw it away. So what I did in order to use my three quarter inch piece of wood here is I took a quarter inch bit. I've got this so that this I ground down so that it would still cut just fine, but I made it so that it's short enough that I can just get basically going about a quarter inch deep on that groove. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this. I'm going to give it a trial run here and then I'll do it on these. But I'm going to do this on my template just to make sure that it's looking good as I set it up and nothing goes wrong. Always good to try it. I'm going to set this up and what you'll also see once again I have made screw holes here. I've made screw holes here that I can attach this. Make sure that it's where it needs to be there. Yep. Okay. And what I'm going into here right now is well this is going to be where the where the pickup is. So I can drill into this and not have to worry about um, a hole there. Why I do that? Uh, you can use double stick tape. Uh, you can tape these on and do that and that's just fine. I've had it just a couple of times though where my template went ahead and moved on me then and messed up a lot. So anytime that I can actually screw it to the, uh, to the wood and get by, as long as you know your placement of your screws, um, that's that's the way to go. That way you don't have to worry about it moving at all. And on here, well, this is where the quarter inch jack goes. So I'll be drilling through that anyway. If you take the time to get your template right, said this is ugly, but it's right. And as, if the template is right, then this goes pretty slick. And there it is on one of the actual body fronts. <laughs> Bye.